now you're probably aware of the sound of the shower running in the background. Uh, this is not an ideal studio situation. All right, in this lecture, I want to talk to you about impedance and admittance. Oof. All right, so um, last time we talked about how we could represent different um, different components in circuits using phasers. So I want to introduce a new term, and that uh, term is going to be Z phaser, which is V over I, which means that V is equal to Z phaser times I phaser. So this really looks like Ohm's law, Ohm's lay, Ohm's law for um, AC circuits. So um, that's what this Z is called impedance. And that is uh, essentially the effect of impeding the current. And so impedance is uh, defined as the ratio of phasor voltage to phasor current. And it's measured in ohms. All right, so I know that for, um, based on the type of thing that I have, R, L, or C, I know what Z is for each of those. So the component, R, L, or Z. For R, the impedance is R. For a inductor, it's J omega L. And uh, for C, it's one over J omega C. Uh, or negative J over omega C. The opposite of uh, impedance is admittance. So uh, Y is defined as the admittance. And uh, Y is just equal to I over V, or in other words, one over uh, Z. And it's measured in Siemens or Mohs. So Mohs upside down, uh, Omega or Siemens, um, which uh, we know is the unit of admittance. All right, so now that I've got that in my back pocket, let's learn some things about impedance. In general, impedance is complex. All right, so Z as a phasor is R plus JX. R, which is the real part of Z, is what I call the resistance. And X, which is the imaginary part of Z, is what I call the reactance. Impedance is said to be inductive or lagging if X is positive. All right, so impedance is inductive or lagging if X is positive. If you can't hear, my dog is currently losing his entire mind in the background because I'm pretty sure that Amazon is delivering a package. So uh, as we go through this period where I'm making a lot of videos um, as a result of doing a little bit of e-learning uh, for my students, um, you're going to hear my dog make a cameo uh, pretty often. His name is Parker, so that's pretty fun. Alrighty. So uh, let's say uh, from there, uh, we have that information. Uh, on the other hand, uh, impedance is said to be capacitive, 
passive or leading if x is negative. And we can pause for a minute and think about why that is. I know that, let's scroll up for a little bit, that the impedance is has more inductance than capacitance, um, at least in terms of its effect, if it's lagging or positive because I get a J omega L term. So I could replace it with a resistor and a um, or I could replace the reactants with an inductor. Uh, on the other hand, if I get a negative value, I could replace it with a capacitor uh, and get the same thing. Even if there are inductors involved, uh, it's either more uh, capacitive or more inductive as we go. All right. Now, um, I know that I can also write Z as the magnitude of Z uh, angle theta in polar form. Okay, so I know that's my polar form. I can also write uh, the following. I know that the magnitude of Z uh, is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared, and that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of um, X over R. Uh, as long as uh, r is greater than zero and it's the inverse tangent of x over r plus or minus 180 degrees if r is less than zero. Uh, that doesn't seem uh, very likely for impedance. Uh, there's no such thing as a negative impedance, so we don't really have to worry about that. So we can kind of zoom in on this one right here. All right, um, and then of course, uh, we can also break down admittance as well. Admittance is G plus J B. G is what I call the conductance and B is what I call the susceptance. So, how do I spell that? I don't even know. Uh, susceptance. We should all dance. All right. So before we actually launch into an example, I want to give you a quick reminder about complex numbers. I know that one of my recent videos also had complex numbers in it. Uh, so uh, we're gonna see a lot of that as we talk about AC circuits. Um, but here's my reminder, we can use uh, the complex con conjugate, the complex conjugate uh, to clear denominators. And so I want to just give you a quick reminder of that. So uh, one over five plus J two, if I multiply it by its complex conjugate, so uh, five minus J two over five minus J two. Uh, remember the complex conjugate uh, is represented using the star or asterisk. Um, and also uh, remember that that just means I'll change the sign of the real part. Um, or if I have an angle, I'll change the sign of the angle. Um, or, what did I say? Change the sign of the complex part or the imaginary part. What is wrong with me today? All right, so let's make sure that we're clear. Uh, this gives me five minus J2 over five plus J2 times five minus J2. So multiplying these together, this is five minus J2 over uh, 25 uh, plus J10 minus J10 uh, and then uh, I've got minus uh, J squared times 4. So um, let's do that out. I've got 5 minus J2 over 25. What I notice, of course, here uh, that's super duper nifty uh, is that uh, I've got J plus J10 and minus J10. Uh, those uh, get to cancel each other out. And then the other thing I'll notice, uh, hopefully, and I'll notice it in a different color, is that J squared is negative 1. So I've got negative negative 1 times 4. So this is plus. Four, uh, which means, uh, first of all, cool thing about the denominator is that instead of being complex, um, 
multiplying a complex number by its complex conjugate uh, gets me a real number. And so I like to say that stuff just got real. All right, so uh, that gives me five minus J two over 29. I could actually cal calculate that out, but that's uh, just a little bit of good practice. All right, so now let's apply some of the stuff I know into an actual circuit example. For the first time since we started talking about AC circuits, we're gonna work with a real circuit. So I don't know why I called that example two. This is the first example in this video. Example one, uh, let's find V of T and I of T in the circuit. So I've got uh, this circuit. I've got a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, you can criticize the way that I'm writing all you want uh, uh, in the comments if you feel the need, uh, but this is uh, essentially as good as it gets. So I've got a source voltage, which I'll call five cosine of 5t. Uh, I've got 10 ohms uh, and then let's define a current I. The voltage is defined across that capacitor. All right, so I want to find the voltage as a function of time and the current as a function of time in this circuit. So the first thing I want to do when I work with any AC circuit is I want to make sure that I identify what omega is because omega tells me information about the impedance for V and I. I'm talking with my hands, you can't see it because this is a screen capture, but uh, I'm. you can imagine it in your head. All right, so omega is equal to five radians per second. Uh, Vs phasor is just five angle zero degrees. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I wanna be able to use Ohm's law uh, to figure out what um, the current is. That's probably the easiest way to go here. Um, although I could use voltage division as long as I know the impedance across that capacitor. So let's start with Z sub C. That's the impedance across that capacitor. It's equal to one over J omega C, or in other words, negative J over omega C. Um, and it turns out that that's equal to negative J over five times 0.2 or in other words, negative J1 ohms. Now to find current, I, I want to take the total voltage divided by the total impedance, uh, which is equal to uh, five angle zero degrees, divided by the total impedance, which is uh, my 10 ohms minus J1. That's equal to, using the complex conjugate trick, five, 10 plus J1 over uh, 10 minus J1 multiplied by 10 plus J1, which is equal to 50 plus J5 over 101. All right, if I get that out in rectangular form, that's going to be equal to uh, zero, 0.495 uh, plus J 0. Uh, 0.0. Let's make sure I get this correct. Uh, 0. 0.0495. Uh, that makes sense. It's a factor of 10 smaller. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll convert that into polar form. So I, uh, by taking the square root of the squares, uh, I is going to be equal to 0 0.497 with an angle 5.71 degrees amps. And then, um, so I've got my I, uh, which uh, will come back to, uh, oh well, we're gonna come back to the phaser version in a moment, uh, but I want I of T, so I of T is just 0 0.497 uh, cosine of 5T plus 5.71 degrees amps. Alrighty, now, if that's I, then uh, let's go ahead and uh, find V. V can be found by taking I divided by, uh, or I, sorry, 
times Z, uh, and V is uh, the voltage across that capacitor. So it's really Z sub C, that Z of the capacitor. So uh, that's one over J omega C times I, or in other words, negative J I over omega C. Uh, either way, it's going to equal to, uh, by the way, negative J is just uh, the same as, uh, uh, one angle minus 90 degrees. Uh, so that's multiplied by I over one. Uh, that's what omega times C is in this problem. Uh, and so I should get 0 0.497 angle, uh, whatever 5.71 minus 90 degrees is, uh, that's negative 80 4.29 degrees uh, volts. Uh, and so converting that into my uh, cosine form, I've got that V of T is equal to 0 0.497 cosine of uh, 5T minus 84.29 degrees volts. All right, so I have I and V. And just as a sanity check here, uh, let's remember my uh, mnemonic device, Eli the Iceman. Eli the Iceman. In a capacitor, I know that I leads V by 90 degrees. That means that the um, angle through uh, angle through the capacitor of the current should be 90 degrees bigger than the angle uh, of the voltage. Um, and I can see that that in fact checks out. Uh, and so uh, we're good on our sanity check. Alrighty, so before I move on to my next example, I want to talk about how we can combine impedances. It turns out that impedances um, which are measured in ohms are combined exactly the same as resistors. Exactly the same as resistors. So let me hesitate for a moment just to point out uh, that in the DC uh, situation, capacitors and inductors um, don't combine like resistors. But we're actually measuring their capacitances and their inductances, not their impedance or the thing measured in ohms. Uh, we want to get everything to ohms and then combine them as resistors. So remember for series resistors, series resistors, the equivalent impedance uh, is just going to be the sum of all the Z's in series. Um, and then uh, I know in parallel that uh, Z equivalent is going to equal to the inverse of uh, the sum of one over Z in parallel. All right, I put that a little, a little bit too far off to the right there. So it's just the inverse of that. Um, so uh, that is exactly how uh, we're going to use this before we do uh, our last example, as I pointed out, I have one more little piece, uh, and that's just that I want to remind you that voltage division uh, still works. It works exactly the same way. So if I have a AC voltage source, uh, which I'll represent using V phaser, and then I've got impedances Z1 and Z2, uh, I can divide some voltages across those. Let's call this one V1 and this one V2. And just you, like you would expect, in V1, I'll take the impedance I care about over the sum of the series impedances times the input source. For V2, I take, again, the impedance I care about, Z2, over the sum of those series impedances Z1 plus Z2 times V. 
If this doesn't look familiar, then you maybe haven't done any DC circuits, but if you've done DC circuits, all of this should look pretty much par for the course. And you should be pretty excited about that because hopefully you already are well accustomed to doing DC circuits. Okay. So let's do uh, one uh, last example. Uh, let's call it example two. Uh, so let's find the impedance at the terminals. If omega is two pi 60, which is approximately 377, radians per second. The reason that I'm doing this is that uh, this is 2 pi of 60 hertz. 60 hertz is the frequency uh, roughly at which uh, power is transmitted in the United States and a couple other countries across the globe. Uh, um, I know if you are uh, in uh, England, it may be 50 hertz. Uh, I should fact check that, but uh, I'm just going to talk uh, and assume that I'm right. Uh, that's a dangerous thing to do. All right, so uh, what's the circuit look like? Uh, I want to find the impedance, uh, I'll call it Zn, of this uh, circuit. Uh, if that's not clear, this is a 3 ohm resistor. I've got a 3 millihenry inductor uh, capacitor with 20 millifarads here. Uh, and then connected across there, I've got a capacitor, 0 0.6 millifarad. Um, and then a 2 ohm resistor. All right, so I want to combine all these things together. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to do that. Um, so to solve this, I work my way as far away as possible from uh, the source, and then I start compressing inwards. So let's work our way out here. Uh, let's call this guy uh, Z3, the impedance Z3. Let's call this one Z1, and then this middle branch here, let's call Z2. All right, so let's start by finding each of those. So Z1 is just J omega L, that's J times 377 times uh, 0.003, which is equal to uh, J 1.13 ohms. Uh, Z2 is equal to 3 plus negative j or 1 over j so plus negative j over omega c which is equal to 3 minus j over uh, 377 times 0 0.02 uh, which is equal to 3 minus j 0 0.133 uh, also in ohms and then Z3 is equal to uh, one over J omega C or negative J over omega C plus two, which is equal to uh, two, two minus J over uh, 0 0.0006 times uh, my 377, which is equal to 2 minus j 4.42 ohms. All right, so how are these things combined? Well, uh, Z3, my combined uh, branch over here, um, shares exactly two nodes, let's highlight that, shares exactly two nodes uh, with Z2, which means that it is in parallel. So I know Z2 is in parallel with Z3. And then once I have those combined, they are in series with Z1. So that's equal to J1.13 plus, and I've got uh, 3 minus J0.133 multiplied by uh, 2 minus J4.42 over their sum. 3 minus j 0 0.133 plus 2 minus j 4.42. All right, so this is equal to five. 
5.414 roughly minus J 13.528 over 5 minus J 4.55 plus J 1.13. Um, I can clear out this denominator by multiplying by the complex conjugate. I'm going to jump uh, sort of to the result there. So that's equal to 1.940 minus J 0.941 plus J 1.13. And when I add these things together, I get 1.94 plus J 0.19 ohms and I have solved the problem. Let's point out one thing. This impedance is lagging or inductive because the imaginary part is positive. That means it is lagging uh, and so uh, the reason why that might be important is if I want to redraw this, I would have a resistor with a value 1.94 ohms plus an inductor with a value J 0.19 ohms. All right, before I wrap up, just one little reminder. Please remember we can use voltage division in AC circuits as long as we move to the impedance. Now, again, I'm going to highlight something really important, and that is that these phasers only work as long as the source or the omega has all the same frequency. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to have to do something different, and that's going to be the topic of a later video. All right, that's all. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.